Recall that the temperature in the refrigerator's freezer section is close to 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or lower. The moisture present in the air inside the room freezes when it comes in contact with the evaporator coil of the refrigerator. This will form a frost layer on the evaporator coil. The thick layer of frost deposit on the evaporator coil restricts the flow of air passing over the evaporator coil. This will also reduce heat transfer between air and evaporator coil. The frost will not allow circulating air from the freezer to the fresh food section. Defrosting is the process of removing the ice or frost from the evaporator or freezer. The image to the right shows defrosted evaporator coil and frosted evaporator coil. Defrosting is an essential part of our refrigerator maintenance checklist, as frost adversely affects our cooling performance. There are several defrosting techniques. These include manual defrost, semi-automatic defrost, and automatic defrost. Manual defrosting can be done by turning off the refrigerator. As we turn off the refrigerator, the refrigeration cycle stops. The cooling coil temperature rises to room temperature, thus allowing the frost to melt away. The manual defrost system is not used in modern refrigerators. This is because it becomes tiresome to defrost the refrigerator manually. The heating system directs the heat to the cooling coil. This heat will melt the frost over the cooling coil. Defrost procedure is applied periodically by stopping the system. The time duration for which this is done is one defrost cycle. Recall that a solenoid valve controls the flow of refrigerant depending on the electrical signals it gets. During the defrost cycle, a solenoid valve interrupts the refrigerant flow to the evaporator. This will ensure that the refrigerant in the evaporator does not get heated. Then, the electrical heating elements are energized, and the evaporator fan blows hot air over the evaporator coil. This will melt the ice accumulated during the refrigeration cycle. The time between two defrost cycles depends on several factors. These include how many times we have opened the doors, and how long the compressor has run. Instead of turning on an energy-consuming heater every 8 hours in modern refrigerators, we can use adaptive defrost control. Adaptive defrost control, ADC, is what makes refrigerators energy efficient. It varies the length of time it takes the machine to go into defrost. An adaptive defrost control uses a control board to vary the time interval between defrost cycles. We will look into each control component of the defrost system in a later topic. Recall that the moisture present in the air freezes when it comes in contact with the evaporator coil. Outside humid air enters the fridge every time the door is opened. This increases the frost load. The ADC will adjust the time between defrost cycle to match the change in the frost load. ADC will function the same way by monitoring the last defrost cycle. For example, if the defrost cycle duration is longer, it indicates a light frost buildup. Then, the adaptive defrost control will increase the time for which the system and compressor run. Similarly, if the defrost cycle duration is shorter, it indicates a heavier frost buildup. The adaptive defrost control will decrease compressor runtime between the defrost cycles by 2 hours.